Uh. All right, so um, <coughs> this uh, year is, um, I've had a quite a busy and sort of, apart from all this, I also had something else that was going. So uh, this will be like a, how do you call it, a, a shmoyas, a talk, you know, a, a discussion together in the past. All right. <coughs> so we're turning to Pasha Kralik. And this is a Shia Klali in uh, Pasha Kralik uh, taking place um, on Thursday uh, evening Earl of Base Tammuz Toshin Iron Base. Earl of Base Tammuz Toshin Iron Base. So we're turning to chapter <coughs> the test of This is chapter Tess Zion, I'm sorry. Safe of Amidbo, Pashkarak. Chapter Tess Zion, Posik, Lamad Lamad Aleph, Lamad Base, Lamad Gimel. Everybody have it? <coughs> so this is the tremendously first and tense moment that um, the followers of Korah and his the Korah and all his followers have resisted Moshe Rabbeinu's efforts to uh, prevent the Machlechus and to prevent the outcome and uh, they've defied all of the uh, uh, efforts that he made to bring peace and they uh, they brought the Keteris, as he suggested, and so on and so forth. And Moshe uh, Rabbeinu literally uh, prayed a prayer, and he offered up a, a prayer and a statement uh, to the Abishtah and uh, to Yidin in general, telling everybody they should separate um, from the Aras Kairach and that the Abish is going to make a very special Indian and that these people are not going to have uh, the same uh, end as what um, people in, people normally have and a whole long impassioned chiller and statement on the part of the Moshe Rabbeinu um, stating at the end that uh, uh, unless they uh, given right at this last moment, then Hashem is going to um, make a new creation, literally, and the uh, the ground and the earth is going to open its mouth and swallow all these people. Pasik Lamadil says, "Vayhi kachalosi ledaber eish kol advarim ha'ila." At the very moment that Moshe uh, f- finished speaking all these matters. That the ground was split underneath all the Adas Kaira. piho, and the um, <coughs> ground literally opened its mouth. Vativla oisom, and it swallowed them. Espoteihem in the houses. Veis kala odom, asher and all the people that were with together, not just the immediate ones who were involved in the, 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 the deliberate clash with Moise Ben, but all the people who supported him, as the one owner, well over 250 people of very important status that they went with him. And Kola Adam, Asher Lekoich, Aveish Kola Rukush, and all that they owned, all the uh, possessions and ownership, all of it went down. Vayel Du Haim, and they went down and everything uh, connected with them 
uh, still alive into the grave. But Hasalehim Ho'oretz, and they covered over them uh, the ground, and they were lost from the from the um, congregation of Yid. <coughs> and there are different diukim and different madroshi uh, chazal talking about the the different um, diukim in the lashenes. Uh, what does it mean, Chaim Shoilo? Um, so just very briefly, that um, they went down into the grave while uh, still alive. And um, in Hayom Yom, the Friedrich Rebbe, the Baal Adyul of Yud Beis Tamas, which is coming up soon, uh, he, he says that you can sometimes be in a state if you don't follow the ways of Hashem, and especially the ways of Moshe Rabbeinu, then you can think you're still alive, but really you are in the, in the depths of the grave. Sho'e <coughs> law, but a hey, indicates a, a very low level in Gehenna or in Kilo in Sho'el, in the grave. So they were still alive. In other words, they, they pictured themselves uh, still alive. They had their idea of life, but it was really like a grave, a, a, a very, very deep grave. And therefore the earth, covered them over and they were lost completely. Now, I want to develop on a, a certain theme uh, which uh, certain of the great um, Medrashim and uh, even the Gemara and Masekta Sanhedrin mention it here. But um, due to the fact that I just mentioned Yud Beis Tamas and I'm, I'm also, since I'm, uh, as you know, I'm I'm going to a big simcha, I'm going uh, away, I'll probably be away for a few weeks. Uh, I want to refer to Pasha Pinchos. The Pasha Pinchos usually, in most years, comes out close to Yud Beis Tamas, if not very close. This year it's a little bit further down the map, but it's il always in and around Yud Beis Tamas. And it's one of the Pasha Pinchos has got a great deal to do with Mr. Nefesh or Pinchos for for the Klavi soil and for uh, his canoes against uh, Zimri ben Salu. <coughs> the whole <coughs> and then there's a, a reference to Kura, a reference to the whole story of Kura and the whole um, result of their machlechas against Moshe, which was the swallowing in the earth, is referred to again in Pasha Pinho. And over there is a, um, a posse which is um, going to be very important for us in this uh, this class. So let's turn over now to Pasha Pinchas, but that will be like a, a covering also of Pasha Pinchas in the Shia Klali. And uh, it will, it's in uh, chapter 26, Kofbal, Pasik Yud Arab. Pasik Yud and Yud Arab. Chapter 26, Pasig Yud and Yud Alev. Pasig Yud tells us, Vatiftach ho'oretz es piho, Vativla oisom, Vi es koirach, Vameis ho'edo. And the, the earth opened its mouth and it swallowed all them and koirach uh, in the passing away of all of his uh, congregation. Bachel ho'eish es chamishim o masayim ish by Yulanet. At the same time as there was also the fire that consumed the other remains of the 250 people. Now you know that when they bought the Keteras there was a fire came out from the Earl Mary and that destroyed certain of them. All those who were left, they were swallowed by the earth. In other words, there were two parts of the destruction of the Adas Quer. Yeah, and therefore there's a whole question in the Gemara Masekta Sanhedrin as to whether Quer himself was from the swallowed or from the burnt. And sometimes it's a little bit unclear who uh, of the one own figures that became involved, who of them were amongst the burnt ones and who of them were, but, but there were two different, uh, you know, that's a thing that he mentions here, that he said there was the opening of the earth at the same time that there was the consuming of the ash 
all the uh, rest of the 250 people, they yule and this, and they were like a, a very um, famous sign. They became like a sign to all the journal. Nace, nace means like a sign or an indication. Then in Pesach Yudalev he says, Uvenei Koirach loy mesa. Over the sons of Koirach, they didn't die. So that's uh, interesting. Why didn't the sons of Koirach die? Well, her, the sons, being uh, the sons of their father, they probably went with their father. And particularly they have a mitzvah and kibbutz uh, out. Uh, probably they felt that they had to go on with their father. So the Pusik goes out of its way in the midst of a whole long uh, portion here in Pasha Pinchas, which doesn't have to do, but since we mentioned the sons of Levi and the Mishpacha of Levi in general, it mentions again what happened with Quir of Radose, and it just it mentions what happened with the sons of Quir. So it comes along Rashi and I'll take a careful look at what Rashi says. The sons of Kirk didn't die, says Rashi. They were at the beginning of the whole Eitzah, the whole idea, the whole plan of, of Kirk. They were in it right at the beginning. They were with their father and they were all for it at the beginning. Or when it actually came to the clash with Moshe Rabbeinu and with Hashem and with the whole rest of the Jewish people. So at that moment, Hirhuru Tshuva, or Hirhuru Tshuva Baliba. They thought, they passed through their minds, Tshuva in their hearts. So the Hara means to think like in a fleeting way, not in a deep Masuda uh, way, but it sort of fleetingly passed through your mind as Hirhuru. In Melaheim, Hirhuru Tshuva Baliba. They didn't openly come out and say, look, we are against this uh, and support Moshe Rabbeinu, but they, they were Mahara, but you, that they weren't doing the right thing. That this isn't, this isn't the right way. Lafiha, says Rashi, Nizbat Elohim Mokim Kovoya Begehenna. Therefore, there was made, Nizbat means, Ori Batsure, so it means like defended cities. It was made a special defended portion for them uh, in Gehenna, in a high place in Gehenna, the Yoshvu Shom, and that's where they sat, <coughs> and that's where they, they as it were, dwelled all the rest of history. So the very fact that Rashi says that they sat there, well, that tends to imply that they were more or less alive. And Rashi's saying on the Pesach of an Eikorek, Loi Meso, means they didn't pass away. Which means that they were sitting in a high area which was defended from the rest of Gehenna, and they were sitting there. In the time, they weren't in the world in general for the time being, but they were they were not in Sha'ila. They weren't in the deep part of Gehenna. They were sort of sitting on the high <coughs> area of Gehenna, and that's where they were, and they didn't die, meaning that uh, if you died, then you went down to Gehenna if you were a sinner, or if you if you're okay, you go to, to Gehenna. Over here, they didn't go right down into Gehenna. They didn't, they weren't dead, and yet on the other hand, they weren't sufficiently out of Gehenna to be alive on the face of the earth. Yeah, and therefore, they had this special place, and that's where. That's what they did. That's what they said. That's what Rashi. That's what Rashi has to say. So we see then that there was one group of the whole Ada, the whole Adas, could have, his son. And Rashi said they were at the beginning, they were all for him and they were with him. But when it came to the actual clash, then they were Mahara Balibon. Balibon means in their thoughts, you know, in their minds. But you and therefore they got a special dispensation. They didn't die, but they didn't live. They weren't completely dead, but they were, they were sort of a high nispatser from the Beteris from Russian Ori Beturis. They were like in a, in a defendant tower up at the top of Gehenna, and Gehenna didn't get to them, therefore they didn't die. Now, that's, um, that. Uh, statement is actually brought by the Medrash Rabbah in Pasha Kuerah. 
where it tells about what we were learning, Tiftechor, it says Piho, over there where we were. And in there, in the midst, the, uh, the Medras brings in a very similar statement to what Marshi brought here. And it says that there was one group that didn't die, and that was the Bnei Koyach, and that they were in a special area which was high. And Loi Meisu, and they were you know, sitting there, and it, it says in the Medrash Rabbah that they were saying, they say Shira. They say like praises of the angels. So why would they say, why would they say praises? Why would they say Shira? So we have to assume that they're praising Hashem for his Rachman, for his mercy, that he saved them, that they didn't undergo what the whole rest of the Adas Kurt did, albeit they're not in an ideal situation yet that they haven't gone out into the world. They're sort of, you know, in a, a halfway situation, like in a halfway place. Now, <coughs> in that Medrash Rabbah, immediately by Hemshech, it tells a story which occurs in the Gemara in the Masekta of Basen, and also in Masekta Sanhedrin. But the difference is that in Masekta Sanhedrin it brings what the Medrash says, and what Rashi brings here, that the Bnei Kuer, even though they went down, they stayed in a high place in Gehenna, and uh, they didn't uh, go all the way down to the bottom, and they, they killed you know, in this high place, Mokim Gavoya, and uh, Rashi says, oh, since uh, Mokim Gavoya, the Aish of Gehen can't sort of quite reach it with all its power, and therefore they're sort of somewhat protected. And that's written in the uh, Gemara, and then the Gemara immediately goes on to tell what the Medrashrava does, and tells this following story. And it's also brought down in the Gemara in Bob Basha. And that is written of one of the great Amorayim, I think it was Rabba Baba Chona. He was walking once in the desert, in the Midbar, and he met up with an Arab merchant. A tayo, it's called a tayo in the Rosh of the Gemara Medrash, means a a seicha yishmaili. That's what it means. So the Arab merchant says to him, "Would you like to see the place where the blue kraha? You would like to see the place where all the ones who were swallowed by the ground? I'll show you where they are." So he says, that, uh, "If you can, then okay." So he goes, and they also they see there are like two big splits, like two big mouths to the ground. And they see sort of like smoke sort of coming out of these two sort of holes in the ground. And uh, if the, um, how do you call him, the, uh, the Sarah merchant wasn't convinced that uh, Rabbi Baba Khanna was impressed by this, so what he did was he picked up a big stick and he put a, a piece of um, old cloth around the top of the stick and he found some water and he soaked it in this water and then he held it inside one of these splits in the ground and all of a sudden it went all black and all charred and all burnt as he's like the Gemara and he just threw it away it was all it was completely charred and useless so he said uh, you can see it's it's really you know, there's really something happening here so um, he says maybe you go over there and put your ear and he said hear what they're saying maybe you, if you've got a a very high ear, you'll pick it up. He goes over and puts his ear down, and it's written that he hears that uh, this voice coming out from wherever, uh, uh, which he already realized was like the opening of Gehenna. He hears this voice saying, Moisha Emes, the Torah say Emma. Moisha is the truth, and his Torah is the truth. And we are the ones who made up a, a story. A badoi is someone who just makes up a tale. We're the ones who made up a tale. In other words, we try to make out that Moisha made up a tale. Yeah, but it's not true. Moisha Emmers, the tale also Emmers. So, that's what he hears. So he's tremendously uh, affected by this, he's tremendously impressed. And he said, what happens with, you know, where those voices come from? So the, the Taya Aravi says to him that uh, these guys are very, very deep in Gehenna. And he said uh, every once in every 30 days, the whole Gehenna 
sort of turns upside down, turns them off like a, a piece of meat inside a pot, and make sure that they cook well. <laughs> one in the front, make sure that they, you know, they're well um, taken care of by the gang. Or every month, it's like a big twist around. They you know, they sort of really get it. So, those are the blue way credit. They're the ones who really got swallowed. And they're at the bottom of the arm, and they take a gut at that. Afu Pikain, they are shrain, even though they're putting up with the, the whole thing. They're shrain at Moishe Emes for Terosa Em. Banachno, Avadu. That occurs in the Medrashaba, the Gemara Barbasa, Gemara Sanhedrin, also in the Medrash Tanhuma. That three or four main places. So we see then that this is uh, pretty earnest business, this whole thing. The Bnei Korev, the sons of Korev, says Rashi, the sons of Korev are not in that much. They're on a higher place, somewhere up, and they, uh, they, um, uh, you know, are not in the Asia of Gehenna the whole time. It's sort of weak by them, and they say sure, they're saying sure. So the plot thickens. You know that there's those who are the the real ones of Kerr, and they take a tip in in Gehenna Marines in as well. The Ilu Bnei Kerr have got a sort of a interesting uh, halfway situation. So the the plot thickens and it becomes even more interesting. That there's a, a Rashi uh, in Tehillim in Kapitul Mem Base. At the beginning, Ka'ayo Tare Yalafi Kaimoyo, another one. It starts off, Lam Nateh Liv Nei Kuerat Mizmoyo. So Rashi says, Who are these Bene Kuerat? Or what's Bene Kuerat Mizmoyo? So Rashi mentions the Bene, three, the three main sons of Kuerat. El Kana, the Asof, the Odachan. They are the three main sons of Kuerat. And Rashi says, They are sitting in a high place in Gehenna. And he said, they made up this mizmoy. And he said, they also make up other mizmoy. And what they do, what they sing these mizmoy in this high place. And he said, what happens is that eventually Hashem let them out. That's what um, Rashi says. And this is where Rashi Gola is from. Uh, he apparently had another medrash on medrash Tilly, maybe or somewhere. Rashi found this. Hashem let them out. And what did they do? The Shors Aleim Ruh HaKoyti. That the whole spirit of Kedusha rested upon them. And they were, <coughs> they were like almost Naviyam. They started telling all sorts of things that were going to happen to the Jewish people. And they told about the Churban Abayis. And then they told about the Golas. And they told about Geula, Geula Shleimah. Moshiach with fear some age. I say bring to Rashi that they eventually they got out and they became very elevated and high people and they told about these things first about the Golas. He said then about the the Gula, then about the opinion based on Mikdash, uh Moshiach with Khir Same. So we see that the these Pane Kura, you know, not only they got out according to Rashi, it's not mentioned in the Gemara and the Medras that I've seen. They got out and they were zeshed to a very high Madriga in Wolfnir and they foretold all sorts of interesting and yet terrible things and yet in the end the ultimate comfort of the Jewish people they also told. So I sought to show them what's, what's the story with these B'nai Kura? What's the, what's the, the, the story with them? So I looked around now I found a sefer, what this sefer brings down, and this sefer was written by a very great, well, he was like an admor, he was like a leader, and he was in, um, uh, I think, what we call today Hungary, in that area somewhere, prior, and he was from the uh, Nispe Hashoya, he was from those that were uh, first in Hashoya, he was very uh, grateful, he was relatively young, like one in a time. I looked in his safer, 
And he brings down a, a medrash, a very interesting medrash, that um, says that um, the Bnei Kurek, they didn't, as he also said, they didn't go down into Gehenna. You know, and when they eventually started saying these Mizmurim, and they, they must have got out, like Rashi says, that other people said to them, why didn't you go with your father? Why didn't you stick with your father? You know, you should have, I was Kibbutz uh, Avayim, you should have gone with your, <laughs> your father. And you guys have stiffened, you know, what happened? So they didn't want to answer, and they said that we, you know, we were Mahara Bachua, yeah, like I said, nearly. We thought uh, Chua, and that's how we, that's how we got out. And it brings different psukim there, also the amazing psukim, to support the Bnei Kuat. Which indicates that there are some sort of very special guys, these, these Bnei Kuat. So what does, it, what does he say? He goes into a, into a, a, a tool very interesting. And he says, look, Taka, why didn't they support their father? You know, there's a mitzvah to be mechavad your father. So it's true, the Gemara says in, uh, in Boba Matia, and also in Kedushim, uh, the Gemara says that if your father doesn't do the right things, you're not required to obey him. If he does things against the Torah, and he tells you to be oiva, divrei Torah, then you're not required to keep obeying him. So what's the problem? So he said, but he said uh, 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 and also there's a her, Another thing that comes up here, that um, this uh, mitzvah sasei pushes away a mitzvah sloi sasei. We have a cloud in the Gemara. So we have a positive command, and a negative command meeting together, then the positive command comes to it, you know, pushes away the negative. So he says, okay, if you've got a negative commandment and you've got a positive command, you have to be the kind of positive command of being, how can the Gemara say that if he does something negative? So he says a couple of tirutim, and he says very gishma. And he says that if the father wants you to go against Hashem to and he, that's a sign that he himself is prepared to do that. He, he would hold that that's the way to act. So if he would act that way, then he's already, somebody who doesn't obey the negative Hashem, then he's mavazah himself. That's the most and it's a terrible scorn that you can make of your own life by doing an available. Then you're scorned by everybody. So he said, if you're scorned by everybody, then you lose your COVID. You don't have any COVID anymore. So he said, the son's not required anymore uh, in, in COVID. Since he does the available, he tells you to do an available, you don't have to give him any COVID. He's Mavaza himself. And then he says another very, very amazing thing. And he says over here, by Korah, we notice that the, it's very interesting that Moshe Rabbeinu, when Korah and his uh, Ada came to him, Moshe Rabbeinu says, listen, let's wait till the morning. When the morning will come, you'll bring all your your kateros, like I said, and we'll come in front of the old man, and then we'll see who is the one, who's the real one. We'll see. But Yehida Hashem, Isha Shalei, Hashem will indicate. So contrary to this, there's a doubt. It's a doubt. It's not clear 100% of who's right and who's not. And, and some people say it because Kura was a, a very great man. He was a very great London. He was a great person. He had a lot of people bashing him and so on and so on. So it, it, it was Kilo. There was left a doubt, you know, who is really, who is really right here. And in the morning is going to show, you know, with the Kitaras and the whole thing. So he says, well, it's a doubt that maybe they should have stuck with their father, at least until it became clear. You know? Why did they kill a go ahead to the father? So he says it's a, a very basic, a very, very important thing. And on the, just before I say what he says, I want you to notice that in all the stories, both about the Bnei Kurt themselves were way down deep, that Rabbi Bachonah had heard them, and the Bnei Kurt would say, and it's also, I saw in another medrash, I looked up another medrash called the medrash Lechaktoi. Now that's another medrash, a famous medrash. And the medrash Lechaktoi says that the way they went down to the ground was very amazing. You know, they, they sort of individually, each one was sort of absorbed in a different way according to how much he'd been against Moshe and so on. It's written that each of the members of the whole Adas Kura, before they actually went down under the ground, that's one in the ground. They all said, Moshe Emma. 
And then the Midrash Rabbah also says that um, that they said Moshe uh, Emma uh, or something like this. Um, uh, that's what the Bnei Korach that heard also say. Everybody, the Blue Eye Korach, the Bnei Korach, everybody says Moshe Emma at Teirase. So the Rebbe says in Asifah, the Rebbe says Lachor, these guys were against the Kahuna. They made a whole fuss. They wanted to be Koyanim, they wanted to be Koyanim, Gedoyim. And Rashi brings a whole series of things that they they made fuss about. They made about the Nasiyim of the Levi, the Al Safan and others. Uh, they want to also be Nasi and they want to be Koyan, they want to be this and want to be that. They didn't sort of openly seem to be going against Moshe or Bina as Moshe or something. They, they seem to be going against this whole idea who's a Koyan and who's not. Kolam, Kulam, Kedoshim, we're all holy, we can all be Koyanim. So the Rebbe, that was all part of, of the basic Indian is that somebody who's in Machloik is the way they were. Basically, their inner was naked Moshe. Okay. They had deep, deep inside a big Machloik when their whole Machloik was only Moshe. In order to make it fit and in order to make it developed in order to gain support for hundreds of other people, they also came in with this thing of the Kahuna and the Kahuna Gedela and other Inyonim. They got the idea of a basically, that was all just like a, a support for their main time. Their main time was against Moshe. And they said that Moshe Rabbeinu has no right to be the absolute leader of the Jewish people. We, we can also be leaders. We can run the Jewish people and we will divide things up the way we think. Yeah. I'll be a Kern Gadol, you'll be a, a Nazi and you'll be somebody else. Yeah. Don't know who needs Moshe Rabbeinu. In other words, that there was something in the very figure of Moshe Rabbeinu that that they couldn't take. That they, they had to get at that. They had to somehow or another. And therefore, every time they express their change after they've already been punished, they say Moshe Emmons, but they only mention Moshe Rabbeinu. I was predicting all the matrots. Oh, they all say the same thing. All these blue eclairs, all these people with the swoop, everybody, they all before they actually get there, one or even after they've got it, they also take Moshe Emma with them. In other words, that their Ike Inu was against Moshe Rabbeinu. And therefore, I looked up in a Midrash, uh, 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 there's a safe where he brings a collection of all different Midrash. And he tried to bring something similar to that Midrash with this um, safe I bought before and mentioned. And certain there, certain people said to the Benekura afterwards, why didn't you go with your father? I'll just keep it out. Why